Too many Americans admit to answering after hour work emails or messages. Seems like a benign topic, but it's really not. Let's read. Seven in 10 people admit to answering their work emails or messages when they're off the clock. Zimbra and Juan Paul. Is that one poll? I can't see. Partnered to survey 2,000 office employees about the pros and cons of always being logged on. They found that 70% of people actually appreciate receiving work notifications at any hour of the day. Do they though? Huh. Do they? I don't buy it. Employees may stay connected during their free time to feel good about being on top of their work because they're hoping to move up within the company and because they don't like leaving things unfinished. But this doesn't mean the work takes over respondents life. 72% would still rate their work life balance as good or excellent. I don't buy that either. I don't buy it. So here's the conversation. It's a multifaceted conversation. Life has changed. It used to be that I remember when I was younger and my dad went to work. He'd go to work. You know, he had a, I don't know, he used to get there really early, actually. So leave the house. For, say he was there from 7 a.m. until 5 or 6 p.m. Drive home. He had a long drive home. He'd come in the house. Hey, hi to the family. There was no contact with work at that point. He had dinner with all of us. We sat down. We had a meal. Maybe he would have to tie up a few loose ends with his pen and his paper. I mean, old school. Think about it. This is the 1980s I'm talking about. He'd do a few little things. There was a lot of family time that was spent. There were a lot of distraction-free zones. There was a lot of just existing and being. There was time to wind down. There was a wind down, right? You wound up for the day, you had your day, and then you wound down from the day. Maybe you watched a little bit of the news that night. You flicked it on to see if anything had gone terribly wrong and you flicked it back off. That was your day and you went to sleep. Now what you have is you have the workday goes all day. Now, some people say, well, that allows me for flexibility. I can answer whenever I want. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to be confined within that nine to five. And that flexibility makes them happy. But let me ask you something. Ultimately, how do you sleep at night? Do you sleep well? Do you? I guarantee you a lot of you don't sleep well because I struggled with this. We don't sleep well because we have a ton of blue light, A, coming at us all day long. You heard about blue light blockers. That's real. Computers, cell phones, we're buried in the phone. We're in the bed at night. The phone's in one hand. The TV's on. We're like, there's always a sense of having something to do. And when does the wind down happen? When do you get to actually leave that work day behind, take a deep breath, sit in your house and do nothing? turn on a movie, sit with your family, have some bonding time that doesn't involve being plugged in? Or are you plugged in all day long? And think about, does it make you anxious? Does it make you feel like you work 24 hours a day? I know you may not have to be in the office from nine to five, but you're working 24 hours if you've got that phone next to you. What is it doing to our psyche and is it good Or bad for us? Is the work-life balance maintained? Everybody says, oh, I work from home, so I have great work-life balance. And then I talk to them more, and they're like, I don't know. I always feel stressed out. I don't sleep very well. I feel like I'm just always eating too fast. I, I, I don't know. Something's wrong, and I can't figure it out. I work from home. I can't figure it out. Well, because your day, your workday doesn't end. You, you think you have work-life balance because you get to go to the gym in the middle of the day, and you get to answer an email when you can, and you get, do you though? Or is work life and regular life now just morphed into one sticky, slimy, like can't separate them thing? And all you know is that you never feel like you get a break. That's how I felt till I made some rules. Put in some rules. You'll never hear from me before like 8 a.m. or before a certain time at night ever because the phone's not around me. So this is an interesting question. Do I think it's healthy, this new dynamic? I personally don't. I personally don't. I think there is something to be said for a wind down. And I think having your mind racing, it also reminds me, guys, of the constant news cycle. Remember, you used to just, you turn on the news. You, I always think of my dad. Not that you're an antique dad, if you're listening, but you're kind of an antique. <laughs> I love you, though. But you know, he'd read the newspaper in the morning. Very old fashioned, still does this. Goes, he wants a hard copy of the newspaper. This digital stuff's not for him. He's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I know you're watching me, private eyes. So he's like, no. Gets the newspaper, gets his cup of coffee, reads the newspaper in the morning and does his work. He still has some work that he does on the side, does that. Pen and paper, guys. Pen and paper. Old school. 
and then he has his day. Everything has a place in his life. He's not, doesn't have a constant streaming of news coming in to his computer or his Twitter feed all day long. You know what that brings him? Peace. Peace. He, when he goes down to take a nap, he's not like me. I go down to take a nap. It's like, oh my God, I have this to do. Let me just answer this one thing. Oh, right. I'm, I'm trying to nap and going through a grocery list of everything I have to do and the phone's right there. So maybe let me just wake up from this nap real quick and do this. Let me just, hold on a second. Maybe I'm not, by the time I go to take the nap, the, the uh, period of time that's been allotted to me, which is basically the time that my son is napping, is done. He goes in, he's like, read his newspaper. He's like, I'm done with the news for the day. I'm going to nap. Sleeps like a baby for an hour and a half. Gets up. Big stretch, you know? And I'm like twitching on the other side of the room, you know? So is this good? Is this bad? Tyler, you're a youngin. I call Tyler the youngin. He's young. Makes me feel like a dinosaur. We won't get into that. But you only, my guess, is no world where this is all happening, right? So how do you do you feel like it's taxing? When, when I describe my dad's world, is that appealing to you or is that stressful? No, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely more stressful now. Like there are times where I'll wake up and I'll spring out of bed. Like I'm like late for something and I'll, I'll go to jump in the shower. It's two in the morning and I feel like I'm late for work. Like I'm late for something. Like I gotta be going, I gotta be rushing. And it, this just reminds me of, uh, of Ariana Huffington who I used to really like mm-hmm. watching her debate on Bill Buckley. I used to be a big fan of, of Ariana and uh, she, she had serious burnout and she was working one day and I guess she collapsed at her desk and buried her face into her glass desk and cut it all up and everything. And she started a company and she's like, I'm done. No more. I can't do it anymore. Started a company called thrive, which helps to uh, help companies uh, avoid the burnout crisis of their employees. And she's like, listen, I started putting my phone to bed yep. an hour before I go down. Like, and it's just like you say, you know, you're always watching television. You've always got the computer. You've always got the phone. You're always getting text messages at night. Like you're yep. always running and gunning. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this generation and millennials develop down the road when they're done working and they're retired. Right. It's like, what are they going to be doing? They're always going to have to be doing something. They're exactly. Gonna out. They're going to lose their minds. And See, I feel really lucky because I have the comparison. Like I grew up watching in the 1980s. Gosh, so long ago. Simpler time. Anyway, I grew up then and I, ha- I was able to see like, oh, okay, the workday has a limit. Like what I just described to you about my dad, I had that and now I see this and I can see the benefits of both. I can see the dangers of this for sure. But like if you have a kid, you know, I have this little boy and I'm like, he only knows this and I don't want him to always see me like that. So I'm very conscious of like, he needs to see mommy, like mommy goes to work, mommy comes home. There needs to be a break where I'm on him. My eyes are on him. And I also, this is very hard and very challenging, but you have to get used to as a parent, not doing this with your kids all the time with the phone because they, they absorb that. First of all, they feel like, well, what's that phone? They get it, the sense, well, that phone must be really important to mommy because it's sharing my time with her. Secondly, they then learn that behavior of that's how they're going to treat people. You know they're going to have a phone, one, that that's how they're going to treat people who are actually in front of them. They model off of us so, so often. And I remember when I was in a um, couple times in my life, once when I first started in TV, burnout, I was doing hits. I was doing free TV for like a year and a half, maybe longer. I have to look back and remember. My dad would know because he wrote wrote it all down in a little journal that he still has. I don't remember how long it was, but it was a while. And I was doing it and I was like, I'm I'm like, I need a minute. It was like, oh, can you show up here at 8 a.m.? Oh, can you show up here at 10 p.m.? Oh, can you? There was like no rhyme or reason. My life just was lost. And I did it. It was part of the grind. But I look back now and I'm like, okay, you have to set some limits. And then when I had Fox and Friends, I remember over the weekend, that time schedule was horrific for me. I was actually considered not taking that job because I was like 3 a.m. I don't know if my body's going to work on that. But it wound up being that I was really working round the clock some days. And I just made a decision. And I wrote that book um, right around the time that I really made a lot of changes. But I just made a decision that it may not be 1985, but I was going to, my life was going to look a little bit like 1985 in some respects. And that phone was going to be out of my room at night and things were going to get shut off at a certain time. And news wasn't going to be, Twitter was going to be something I went to when I, like 
it was certain times a day. I go, I check a few times a day, but I'm not just like on there all day. I see people on there that are tweeting every minute. And I'm like, every minute for 13 hours, where, what, where do you eat? And yeah, they do, but they're eating while they're doing that. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's a real problem. It's creating mental health problems in people. It's creating anxiety, depression, restlessness, um, sleeplessness, lots of things from just always having your eyes on something. So I know this isn't, you know, politically controversial, but I do think it is controversial because it tackles some of this remote work that's being glorified. It tackles some of this oh, it's convenient, it's good for you to be plugged in all the time. It tackles some of what's happened with technology in the last 10 years and what's really not reversible. You can't go back. Truly, I ask for the DeLorean because there's no other way. There's no other way to get back to that simpler time because you can't reverse. It's like you give an inch, it's done, right? You're not gonna roll back Twitter. There'll be something else that pops up. This is our new way of life, the phone, you know? Well, and just wait until there's no, you don't have to pause to pick up the phone. And right. Yeah. Wait till something like Neuralink comes out where you are literally in a symbiotic relationship. Oh, and I'm there not doing is, that. There is no, like it's, it's you, you are it. You, Listen, you know. Tyler, if you think I'm a dinosaur now, you wait. You wait till this next round of AI stuff comes out. You know where I'm gonna be? I tell people, I'm gonna be in an area of the country where there's like no towers, Cell towers, there aren't gonna be anywhere I am. There's gonna be grass, there's gonna be wells. I have a friend that has a water well. I'm like, you have a water well? He's like, yeah, I go out, need some water. I'm like, what? It was so appealing to me that just hearing about it made me euphoric. That's where I'm gonna be. Because this disconnect, all of this, by the way, just as an added note, all of this is a disconnect to nature. It's a disconnect to each other. It's a disconnect to everything that really grounds you as a human being. We talk about grounding into the actual earth, but what about what grounds you in your relationships? Eye contact, connection, all of that stuff is getting lost and it's all coming back to this idea that you should be accessible to everyone else 24 hours a day. There are times I'll write a message to Tyler at night, I'll send him a message for work and I'm like, I hope he doesn't answer because I hope he's not looking at his phone. That's my second to do it because I'm like, I have a baby that's asleep, but truly, People need, every single person needs peace. And we, one of our first guests we're gonna have on here, by the way, he's a great guest. I'm not gonna tell you his name. Can't put the goods out there, I told you. But he's amazing. He's going to cover um, a lot of toxicities and things that are wrecking our mental health and our physical health. And a lot of it is gonna have to do with this as opposed to go for a walk. You know, with this as opposed to go on a date and actually like get those social, like, like, get that feedback from someone because you're paying attention to them. All of that stuff. It's gonna be really, really fascinating. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.